Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sigmund Freud Show. My guest tonight will be Mr. Marlon Bando, also known as the Godfather. I'm glad to meet your acquaintance, Mr. Bando. Well, thank you, Doctor. It's nice to be here today on your show. Yeah. Um, the reason that you were sent to my show, besides uh, this analytical portion, is your people have said you are having trouble sleeping at night. Um, you're having delusions of horses' heads in your bed and that you cannot sleep. What is going on in your life to cause this uh, trouble for you? I'll tell you, Doctor, these bad dreams I have at night. Yes, tell me more. Uh, it has to do, I think, with this war I'm having with the Gambino family. The Gambino family, yes. And uh, this war has been going on for years now. For years? I, I, I still get this feeling that there's something else in your life that is more troubling than the war. Something happening to your family that you're not being honest with me or telling me the whole truth. What, what else is happening? Well, Doctor, I, I, I can't feel I can tell you my darkest secrets because my family is a good family. We used to be in gambling prostitution. Yes. And, and now I'm trying to resolve these old problems we used to have. And, and my son, my little Bambino, was shot 54 times by the Gambino family. And, and which is your son's name? My son. His name is Sonny. And he's no longer with us? No. He's, they, they shot him down in the prime of his life. Fifty-four times, you said? Yes, Doctor. How could anyone be so cruel to shoot your son fifty-four times? I don't know, Doctor. This is a war I think we need to resolve. Yeah. I, sent, I sent my closest bodyguard to them. Who, who is your closest bodyguard? What, what did you do? Well, Explain, please. I, I, I sent Johnny Spaghetti-O. Spaghetti, huh? Yes. Uh, this, I, it sounds like a, he's like some kind of meatball to me. Well, he's, he's a not, saucy type of fellow. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Doctor. He's my, my closest friend. Your closest friend? You yeah. sent your closest friend to your enemy? What? Well, I wanted to resolve this problem, you see. And what they did, they did him in. They did him in? Yes, yeah, so he's sleeping with the fishes tonight. I don't understand. I, Sleeping with the fishes? Are you trying to tell me that he's like a fisherman? Uh, well, Doctor, I don't know if he's a fisherman or not. But I know he doesn't float too well. Uh, he doesn't float so well. Uh, I can see that you have many problems in your life. And I would like you to become more nocturnal and be able to sleep again. So I will uh, write an order for some medication for you. And you'll have to take the sweet. Oh. No, doctor, I don't think that would be good for me. What, medication? I, I think we need to resolve this war. They hit my son, I'm going to hit his son. This oh, is no, revenge, revenge never accomplishes anything. You must try to strive for a resolution. Go sit down with them and talk to them. No more killing, please. I, I don't know, doctor. This is so trying for me. It's hard. I need this revenge. I think that's the best medication for me. They hit my family, I'm going to hit them. It's one of these things that go back and forth. But you cannot keep compensating your life with this style of killing. You, you, must, you must retract yourself and, and become an admirable citizen like myself, of course. Well, I, I, I tell you, Sigmund uh, Hemorrhoid. Uh, my, my name is, is not Hammerite. My, my name is Freud. Uh, well, whatever your name is, Doctor. Uh, you, well, you look like a fine gentleman to me anyway, but uh, I don't think you can really resolve my problems. This, this is a matter In, metaphor. Initially, I, I liked you as a person, but the more I listen to you, I, I find out that you are just a, a vengeance, watermonger monger type person. Uh, I don't even know if I should analyze you anymore. For one thing, how, how do you plan on paying for my bill? I charge like $100 an hour. Well, doctor, I, I do you a favor today, and someday you'll come back to me, and I'll resolve any problem you have. My family is a powerful family. 
Who, what kind of uh, favor are you talking about? I, I don't need any favor. What do you mean, flavor? Flavor. Candy flavor? Candy flavor? Licorice? I, I don't like candy. What, what kind of, I, I want my money. That's what I want, my money. $100 an hour. That deal stinks. That this flavor business or whatever you're talking it about. It stinks. It stinks like your shoes. These are shoes from my old family. These are Sicilian shoes. I don't care how silly your shoes are. I have nothing to do with your shoes. I want my money now. Now. So you think my offer stinks, huh, doctor? Yes, I, I will not accept this offer. I, well, what do, you, what do you think of this kind of payment? Who is this? What are you doing here? Jimmy, get him. Welcome to the Dream Date Show, the show where your dreams can come true. Today we have a beautiful model and airline stewardess, Jennifer Bardo. Her hobbies are bike riding, jogging, swimming, and kissing, but not in that order. <laughs> now it's time to meet Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Bob. So good to meet you, and I'm so happy to be on the show. I never meet any single man as a stewardess. They are all married, but they lie. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sure you'll have a great date. Um, if you'll take a seat, we'll start with these uh, bachelors, and I want to introduce them to the audience. Um, uh, bachelor number one is a nuclear scientist, also loves photography and airline stewardesses. Meet Mark Thomas. Wave to him, Mark. Hmm? Uh, wait. Wait. Oh, oh. I dated myself. Okay, bachelor number two is a real estate magnet. I mean a magnet you know, from New York, Ronald Rump. <laughs> Wave to him, Ron. And <coughs> bachelor number three is a delicatessen manager at a sushi wa. He is also an expert at cooking, and he loves to drink sake. <laughs> I hope, Jennifer, that you're relaxed and ready to ask these eligible bachelors these questions. And we do have a fine group here for you. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. <laughs> I have my questions, and now I'm ready to go. OK. Bachelor number one, I'm an old-fashioned girl. Would you pick me up at the door, and what would you bring me? I'd bring uh, red roses, and uh, I'd pick you up in a limousine. and. Uh, and wherever you want to go, uh, we would go there and uh, have a very good time. Thank you. And bachelor number two? Well, I just got back from the Gulf, you know, and uh, I was on reserves, and uh, well, they kind of kicked me out now, but <laughs> no big deal. But uh, I got this Humvee, this four-wheel vehicle that I had over in the Gulf. And pick you up in that, you know, right now it's a red color, it used to be sand color. So we can drive around on the beach, look around for some oil slicks or something, and have a good time. You know what I mean? Thank you, bachelor number two. And bachelor number three, would you pick me up at the door, and what would you bring for me? Yeah, it's very good time. Ooh, that sounds very exciting. Bachelor number two, I like rap and rock and roll music. What type of music do you like? I like rock and roll and rap in that order. So, uh, you know, I'm flexible. Bachelor number three. Ooh, that sounds very good. Where do you listen to your music? It's going to Japan and uh, Chimokani and Korea, North Africa. I think you said the bedroom. Ah. Mm. Contestant number one, what would you say to my mother and father if I brought them to meet you? Hmm. A very nice gentleman and a multi-millionaire. <laughs> Bachelor number two, what would you say to my mother and father? Well, I'd say, uh, it's nice meeting you. It's uh, been a long time since I've been with a woman. And, <laughs> and you know, over in the Gulf, I saw a few. But they had these veils on their faces, and Ooh. you really couldn't see too much, you know? So uh, He's already on. I know I'd enjoy you. Bachelor number one, 
What is your idea of a great night out on the town? Some uh, nice slow dancing and a uh, uh, very nice meal and, uh, and uh, hmm. I can't think right now. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that sounds pretty relaxing. It sounds like a nice time. How about you, bachelor number two? Well, first we'd go out and do some rap music, and then we'd uh, dance the night away, and then we'd uh, hop in my Humvee, maybe drive downtown, check out some uh, nightclubs, maybe 10, 12 nightclubs, a couple drinks in each one, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then uh, take you home, uh, or else you can go to my place. I got a nice tent. I see. And bachelor number three, what's the great time you're going to show me? Well, it's a oh, very good time. Oh, <laughs> baby. Yo. No, no. The middle. No, she... Bachelor number one, do you think we should kiss on the first date? Yes, I, I believe so. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's a way of showing that you uh, actually like me and... Uh, we, um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. I don't. How about you, Bachelor Number Two? Yeah, we can start out with kissing. You know, I can, I can like to kiss uh, for <laughs> maybe half hour, something like that. And then as uh, things progress, never know what might happen. Bachelor Number Three, what do you think of kissing on the first date? Oh no, not at all. No, no, no. <laughs> even kiss my lips. Oh, no, even. No. Oh, I got uh, sushi breath. Oh. I like a man with just a little hair on his chest. Bachelor number two, how would you describe your chest? A little hair, just a little hair, but muscular. Okay, that's all the time we have for questions, Jennifer. Uh, I hope you can make your decision. What do you think it'll be bachelor number one? Or bachelor number two? Or finally, bachelor number three? Well, it's now time to pick the uh, bachelor of your choice, Jennifer, and have you made your decision? It was very difficult. They're all very exciting men, very interesting, but my decision is bachelor number three. Bachelor number three. Well, he's a good contestant, and uh, he's congratulating the other two now. But here's bachelor number one, a nuclear scientist who loves photography and airline stewardesses. Meet Mark Thomas. Oh, Jesus. And bachelor number two, a real estate magnate in New York. His name is Ronald Rump. Hey, too bad. And contestant number three, the one that you chose, is a Samurai Dill contestant uh, manager, and he runs a sushi one. His name is Samurai. Come and meet your date, Jennifer Samurai. And you have won a trip. You have both won a trip to go to the Bermuda Triangle, sponsored by we hope you come back, travel agency. Well, this is your hope, bo host, Bob Banks. Hope to see you again next week when a bachelor will be a retired Civil War general and th the three bachelorettes will be Dallas cheerleaders. See you next week. Say goodbye, everybody. Well, no, to the Dream Day right Show. Cause your brother was dead Dead things that we last made 
Howdy dee lo lady, yodi yodi lady. He dug a new one every night. How did he load a lady? Certainly so. Must have lost 50 pounds on that hot desert ground. I saw losing any more. Oh, the deep little lady, you the little lady. Good afternoon. How are you? Very well. Hey, I seen your sign out there. Special today, huh? Very good. Yeah. Oh. Very good. Yeah, whatever you say. You know, yeah. what the heck. Say, um, got a menu I can see here? Oh, there you go. There you go. It's kind of dirty here a little bit. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. That's a nice outfit you got there. Hey, you know what? Oh. You're, uh, you from Chicago or somewhere? This is it. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, I see a uh, special. Fried rice, huh? That's very yeah, good. I'll, I'll take that. I'll right. take fried rice. Very good. Okay? Fried rice? Okay. Fried rice, come out. Ah, good. Well, uh, uh, say, sir, uh, put it. Oh, yeah, okay, uh, yeah, it's fried rice, okay. I saw you cooking it on there, but, uh, I like it a little more well done, huh? <coughs> well, well, I'll tell you, I'll get something else. No, no, that's okay, that's okay. I'll what? get something else, okay? Uh, See what else you got? Hmm. Oh, you make submarine sandwiches here, huh? Yeah. But, uh, it looks like twice the amount is if I would get it at submarine sandwich. Oh. Oh, you mean they're twice as good? Yeah, they're very good. Oh. Whoa. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> hey, that does look good. You already cut it for me, too, huh? Good. Now, well, check this out. It does look a little expensive, though. Huh? Hey, what's this? Hey! Hey, it says uh, submarine sandwich on here. Oh, no, no, huh? no, no, it's not the same. Oh, it's just the bag. Ah, huh? yeah. Oh, okay. Well, well uh, I'll tell you what, buddy. Uh, I don't think I'm going to pay this price, okay? I'm gonna, I'll see you later. <laughs> Where's my bill? Where's my money? 